Okay, in this video we will be discussing linear inequalities in one variable and we will be asked to graph the solution set and also well first we have to solve it of course and then we'll graph it on a number line and then we will finally write it in set notation. Basically what we're going to do is solve for h in this case because that's our variable and as if it were an equality however we have to remember a fact that um, if you invert two sides of an inequality the sign changes and another fact that if you multiply two sides of an inequality by a negative value you also flip the sign of the inequality so we should begin then we are given two times the quantity one minus three h plus four times h is less than or equal to two say less than or equal to is what i should say and we have two times the quantity seven plus two h well, one way we could do this is simply divide all the terms by 2, and that would certainly make it a little simpler. But I'm, that may not be as comfortable as the, the way that most people will do it, and they'll simply distribute the 2 on this side. Distribute the 2 on this side would be the first step. So we'll do that. So we have 2 times 1. So we get 2 here. And then we have 2 times negative 3. So that's minus 6 but we also have the h there and then so we're done with this distribution so we have plus 4h because we well we haven't done anything with that yet is less than or equal to now 2 times 7 we have 14 and then we have 7 or sorry 2 times positive 2 which is 4 so plus 4 and then we have the h there well now we can begin to we can combine like terms so in this case we have 2, now we have minus 6h plus 4h, that's just saying you had 4 apples, somebody took 6 apples, um, you're in debt 2 apples, let's say. So 2 minus 2h is less than or equal to, well this side we can't really do that, because there's nothing to combine here. Um, well now what we can do is well we can put all the variables on one side and all the numbers on one side and we could solve right so one thing one thing to do is we could subtract the 4h to each side and we can also subtract the 2 to each side and what we have is well this becomes zero right um, this becomes zero oh I forgot to do it to this side we have to do the same thing to both sides. So altogether that's minus 6h is less than or equal to 14 minus 2 which is 12 and we're almost there. We just have to solve for h now and it looks like h was multiplied by negative 6 so of course to reverse that and to solve for h we'll simply divide by negative 6. However like I said at the beginning of the video when we multiply by a negative value of course the sign will change and so and I'll discuss that in just a minute why that is if, in case you didn't know and so this the 6 cancel and the negative cancel so we have h and here it goes is greater than or equal to negative 2 because the sign changed and let me just discuss that real quick well we all know that 3 is greater than 1 right well let's multiply each side of this by negative and let's not change the sign. Then we have minus 3 is greater than minus 1. And that's not true. If you're in debt $1 versus being in debt $3, well, being in debt $1 is definitely better than being in debt $3. So this is sort of the reasoning why we did all this. So, well, we solved the solution. We said h has to be greater than or equal to 2. Sorry, negative 2. Now we have to graph the solution set and we also have to write it in interval or a set notation. So graphing it would simply, we're simply going to write, draw the number line and we'll do some little lines here and then we'll say this is negative 2 if you'd like. So this is negative 1, 0, 1, 2. At any rate, this, this says that h can equal negative 2 or it can be greater than negative 2. So if it can equal negative 2, we're simply going to draw a closed dot here. And, and if it can be anything greater, then we'll simply shade in everything over here. 
and you see nothing back here will be used because h is not allowed to be less than negative 2. It is, however, allowed to be equal to 2. So that's the graph of it. Um, and now, using interval notation, what we'd say is that to, to indicate that h can equal negative 2 is to say using a square bracket. And, well, if it can be anything greater, then it can go on to infinity if we'd like. And, of course, we use a we still use a parenthesis for infinity because we can't capture infinity. And then in set notation, well, we use these little squiggly braces to indicate a, 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 the beginning of a set. And then we have H. So this this reading this just says the set of all H values such that, that's what this bar indicates, H is greater than or equal to 2. So again, the set of all h values such that h is greater than or equal to negative 2. And so any value from negative 2 on in the positive direction will make this inequality true. And so that's this is the graph, the interval notation, the set notation. And we will discuss one more problem in this section. We have negative 1 is less than negative 2x minus 5. Which is less than or which is less than seven. Now, one way to view this is that minus two x minus five must be less than seven, and it must be greater than negative one. So, really, we're dealing with two inequalities here. So, and, and the conditions have to hold for both of these inequalities. We can't just deal with one and not the other, or this one and not this one. So, anything that we do to this side we must do to this side, but we must also do to this side because we're treating this as two inequalities rather than one now. So if I want to solve for x so that I can find my solution of the values that make this true, I will simply, well my first step will be to add 5, but since this has to be greater than negative 1, I have to add 5 here, and since this has to be less than 7, I have to add 5 here, and so what we get is 4 is less than negative 2x which is less than because that's 0 12 okay and well now we only have one more thing to do because we're on the verge of finding what x is but it's multiplied by negative 2 so we have to divide by negative 2 however like I said before when you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative the signs will change so if we divide by negative 2 we have, must do it to all three sides because this is actually two inequalities. And what we get is 4 divided by negative 2 is greater than, because the sign has to change, x, because this is just 1, and then this is greater than negative 6. Um, and, and of course we can, this j just simply means that negative 6 is less than x, which is less than negative 2, if you'd like to look at it in the reverse order. Okay, and now this is the solution. That means that x can take on any value from negative 6 to negative 2 exclusive, meaning not quite negative 6 and not quite negative 2, but values right infinitesimally close to those values. And that will make this equation, or this inequality rather, true. Um, the interval for this would be what? Well, we use a parenthesis because we can't capture negative 6 because it's not true for that value. And then we can go where? Well, we can go up to negative 2, but again, we can't capture that value. It's not true. It doesn't make this true. So this will be our interval. And if we wanted to draw the graph or the number line, well, we could say this is negative 6, and then we got some negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. We will denote that as open dots, as in, okay, we can't use quite those values, but anything in between. Anything in between. And if we would like to do this in set notation, we can say the set of all x values, so the set of all numbers, such that the number is greater than negative 6, but less than negative 2. And that will be our set, and that will be our solution. 
now, now that I think about it, I'd like to add one more problem that will deal a little bit more with fractions so you can get more of a look at what's going on here. So for this last problem, we're given an, an inequality that deals a little bit with, with some fractions. Um, and it also has one difference from the previous problems is that we have less than and then we have less than or equal to. Now, with this, we could we could solve it by adding and subtracting fractions and and all that, um, but that that might not be the the most efficient way of doing it. So what we have to do, or what we should do, is look. Two times three is six. Three times two is six. Two times three is six. Six times one is six. So if we multiply this entire inequality by six, we can get rid of all of the denominators, which will make the problem just that much easier. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to multiply this by 6. I have to multiply this by 6. I have to multiply this by 6. And I have to multiply this by 6. And what that reduces to, well, it's minus 6 divided by 2. Well, that's just minus 3. And then we get what here? Well, we get well. We we could divide six by three, which is two, and multiply by two, so that's four. Or we could say two times six is twelve, divided by three is four. Okay, and then here we could say six times three is eighteen, divided by two is nine. Or we could say six divided by two is three, three times three is nine. So that's less than or equal to. Now this, well, that's pretty clear what's going to happen there. We have 11. Now we can simply, this look uh, appears to be just like the other problems. We have to subtract the 9, and not just from one side or two sides, but all three sides, because this is two inequalities. So minus 3 minus 9 is minus 12. And then we get 4, k. Okay is less than or equal to and 11 minus 9 is 2 and now what do we have to do again I mean we've seen this in the past two problems so it should be no no surprise we have to divide by 4 this is 1 of course so we have k and notice it's not no negative here so it's okay we can keep the signs the same. So 2 over 4 is just 1 half, right? 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice, and then, alright, well 4 goes into negative 12, negative 3 times. And so, well, well we solved the solution. We solved the, we found the value of k, or the values of k, rather, that make this inequality true. Namely, the values that are just slightly greater than negative 3, all the way to one half, inclusive because it's allowed to equal one half due to this equality down here, greater than, less than or equal to. Um, well, if we want to do the interval notation for this solution, we begin here at negative three, and we use the parentheses to denote that no, not quite negative three, but just right after, and then we go up to one half, and we use the brackets to indicate again, okay, you're allowed to, it's allowed to equal one half. So we go all the way to one half and include one half. Um, so this is one way of writing it. This is another way. Uh, well, we could again, again, we can do the number line. Um, we can, th we could say this is negative three, and then negative two, negative one, zero, one, and this is one half. So something like that, and anything in between where this is one half and another solution or another way of writing the solution would be in set notation that's just to say the set of all k values the set of all numbers such that negative three is less than k that is k is greater than negative three and k is less than one half or it's equal to one half and that will be the solution and that will be the end of the videos thank you for watching